So in today's video, we're going to have a look at what's been happening in China's oil and gas industry in 2024. We did a previous video, which introduced the basins of China and some of the historic successes and some of the petroleum provinces there are. So um, go and have a look at that video on the channel. Uh, and now you're going to see what's been happening in the last year. There it is, China. So why do we care about China? Well, here's a listing of the, uh, the top 10 oil companies by market capitalization. And you can see there's three Chinese companies, PetroChina, Sinuk, and Sinopec. Three of the top 10 companies are Chinese. Not only that, in the previous video, looked at the basins of production history, China's oil and gas story, it's called. And uh, we looked at the news in 2023, now we're moving the story on to 2024. In the previous video, we looked at the uh, production history. Uh, you can see for China, uh, there's been a steady growth in oil production to um, a sort of a current level of around about 4 million barrels of oil per day. But it's really been the success in, in gas. And you can see this is in billions of cubic feet per day. And in certainly the last uh, decade or two, the gas has, has been very, very successful. Lots of production. Now, if we first take a look at onshore, some of the projects and what's been happening this year. Well, there's been major discoveries. Back in January 2024, the, uh, the ministry announced the uh, Uxindia 1 discovery in the Henan province. This discovery was the first discovery in, in half a century. It's a light oil. There are three pay zones. It flowed 126 barrels per day. Its uh, initial estimates are some... 780 million barrels of oil in place. So uh, we'll see just how that develops. Now there's also uh, other opportunities and prospects identified nearby. There's the article there that brought our attention to this. If we move further over to the west, the West Sichuan uh, onshore basin, um, well, we have a field startup in March 2024, which Sinopec uh, operate. It's part of the project Deep Earth Sichuan. It's uh, Sinopec's third 3.5 TCF sour gas field in the province. Guang and Yuanba are the other fields. So uh, the third field, West Sichuan field, expected to produce sort of 70 BCF of natural gas annually and probably around about 130,000 tonnes of sulphur annually. Now if we uh, move on and we look uh, offshore China, Bohai Basin, well, this has been a, an active region and a source of many recent significant discoveries in China. You can see it's essentially, it's a tertiary basin here. The, the main targets are here down in the Eocene and Paleocene. The shallower section uh, tends to be quite mud-rich in the, uh, the Miocene-Pliocene, but uh, the sands really from uh, Oligocene on down. Many of the tertiary sediments are on top of of older pre cenozoic volcanics in the region. So it was uh, Sinoc, uh, they announced the uh, Suizong 36 1 uh, Luda 5 redevelopment scheme. Now, the field was uh, and actually, it's a, it's a Cambrian aged reservoir, it's a sort of buried hill, discovered back in 1986 and been on stream since the uh, 1993. Heavy oil accumulation. But certainly gone on here with the, with the redevelopment. Uh, it includes a shore pass component in the development uh, in quite shallow waters. There are two new central platforms, two new wellhead platforms, some 81 production wells planned for the field, some up and running now, 37 water injectors. Expected peak production around about 30,000 barrels per day of heavy crude in 2025. In June 2024, Suzgong uh, 36-1, it became the first offshore field in China to actually have produced more than 100 million tonnes of crude. Definitely a success story. If we move on and have a look at the uh, Bozhong 26-6 discovery, again, Bohai Bay down to the south, in very shallow water again. And it was uh, CNOC in March 2024 announced uh, the reserves here expected to exceed 1.3 billion barrels for this March 2023 discovery, following great success at the D1 well. Now, it's the world's largest deep metamorphic rock reservoir, um, 
says upstream. Seenock uh, states it's uh, an Archaean um, buried hill, but uh, that equates to a, a fractured basement reservoir. And you can see here, this is a cross section taken from the very excellent GeoExpro. Now, some of these names I just love. You can read it for yourself. The 27.3 Discovery, it was in the north central Bohai Bay, and it's again Seenock, March 2024. 104 million tons of oil equivalent in place. So you've got the 2733 well. It was drilled in water depths, 25 meters, quite shallow, only uh, one and a half kilometers down. Found at 49 meters of pay zone in the, the Neogene. And it's a sort of a medium to, to heavy crude. Tested at 742 barrels of oil per day. Another significant find here for Seenook. There's a, a picture of of where the field is located within the Bohai region. Long Ku 7-1 discovery is in the eastern Bohai Basin, and it was again Seenock. It was a well that was drilled and announced in July 2024. This is a much deeper well, down at nearly four and a half kilometers, shallow water again, and found some 76 meters of oil and gas pay. Uh, tested around about 1,300 barrels of oil per day, and uh, sort of 35 35 million cubic feet of gas per day, which is a new record for gas productivity in the Bohai Bay. It's another one of these uh, buried hills, these fractured basement reservoirs. So uh, lots of success in this region here. Again, in the Bohai Bay, this time in the central region, it was uh, CNOC announcing in October 2024 the startup of the Bozhong 19.2 uh, facility now again shallow water it's uh, four unmanned wellhead platforms and a central processing facility some 59 wells 34 producers 25 injectors expected to peak in 2025 now cnoc uh, had lots of discoveries in 2024 they're uh, aiming to have an annual production of some 2.9 million barrels of oil equivalent per day in 2025 we'll watch that space and so if we uh, turn our attention to the south of China, and here we're having a look at the South China Sea, which is a, a tertiary base, and there are lots and lots of plate tectonic collisions around here, lots and lots of mountain ranges uh, being pushed up, and lots of uh, rainwater and erosion. And so we have uh, this big drainage system, all these rivers coming from the high mountains, uh, you know, the Pearl River, the uh, Red River, Mekong, Chao Phraya or Chao Phraya, depending on where you come from, and uh, others uh, all feeding into the basin, which you can see there on the map on the left. And of course, that sets up the region here. So you can see the, the countries in the, uh, in the region highlighted here. We're going to have a look at, uh, in particular, the Pearl River Mouth Basin, the Baibu Wan, and then just on into the uh, South China Sea region. Well, looking at the maritime claimed in this region is kind of a controversial subject and uh, also a bit of a moving feast. But what uh, I particularly like about uh, this map here, it shows where the, uh, the Chinese uh, licenses areas are here. And then into this color here is um, Vietnam's claim. We have Malaysia in blue with Brunei sandwiched in between the, the two areas here and then another area of Malaysia with Indonesia in green in between. And then this orange area, well, that's obviously one of the hotly contested regions, in this case between Vietnam and China. And of course, there's the Spratly Islands, there's the Paracel Islands, and I don't know what other militarized uh, islands that have been built in the last few years in this region, but it's all a bit of a mess. But hopefully it all gets resolved peacefully. There are indeed some um, JDAs, so uh, they're joint development areas, and they seem to work well as a solution to uh, various international boundaries. And then you can see here this purplish colour here. That's the, uh, the dispute between Vietnam and Malaysia. Now, this mightn't be the latest and greatest version, but it does uh, show you the, uh, the relative sizes of the uh, country's continental claims or continental shelf claims and deep water claims as well. So an interesting map, but we're going to start by looking at the Pearl River Mouth Basin. So moving down to the south uh, offshore China here, and it's into the Pearl River Mouth Basin. Now this is a typical uh, tertiary basins of uh, Southeast Asia. And you can see on the cross section here, uh, that uh, you've got these sags, as they're known, but little sub-basins. Uh, they can be very, very deep and localised. 
and you can see on the map here that uh, we have all these sags and then the the sort of intrabasin highs. So some detail on the source rocks here. We've got the Enping and the Wang Chang formations here. Um, sort of the Custrine source rocks ranging uh, from sort of two and a half to sort of twenty seven. Uh, percent TOC. Now some of those are culls, but uh, we've got sort of hybrid humic and, and sapropelic source rocks. So some gas prone, some oil prone, but uh, the level of maturity that we're seeing, some of them are, have gone through the uh, the oil window and into the gas window. But uh, we do have a range of oil fields and gas fields, and you can see the distribution on the map top right. Now there was a test in ultra deep water uh, of the Pearl River Mouth Basin. It was the uh, Luan 4-1 structure. Now it tested 430 cubic meters of gas per day. It uh, was announced in September 24 and it's in a carbonate reservoir in this uh, this region here, the, the Bayun Sag, uh, which is probably one of the uh, the, the richest uh, sub-basins in, in the region. Now it encountered 650 meters of a gas pay uh, in some water depth of 1,640 meters. And you can see there's the basin there. So um, we've got all these source rocks down here. And then on the basin margins, uh, we get some of these reservoirs. The ages are, are given here, but pause the video if you want to see more detail. So from the map here, you can see the uh, Pearl River Mouth Basin. And at the eastern end of that here, CNUC announced a production startup in September 2024 of the LH11 and LH4 uh, oil fields uh, located here in the, in the south of the uh, Pearl River Mouth Basin. 32 wells uh, to be drilled, a new deep water jacket platform and a cylindrical FPSO. Uh, going to be uh, utilised in the region. Water depth around about 305 metres. Expecting um, around about 18,000 barrels of oil equivalent production per day in 2026. Here's our entry in uh, Trove for the LH oil fields. And you can see we've got lots of maps, seismic lines, write-ups, discussions of uh, infrastructure and, and all sorts of information. Now, moving on in the east, eastern South China Sea, Pearl River Mouth Basin, similar area to the one we looked at before, but now we're looking at the uh, the XJ oil fields. And uh, here they are, bought on stream and announced in October 2024 in 98 metres, so shallow water. A 23 uh, well development is being planned. I expected that uh, that'll reach peak production in 2027, around about. 27,000 barrels of oil equivalent, a busy region, the Pearl River mouth. Turning now to exploration, and uh, again, this is, uh, we've been looking at this region here, the the LH and the uh, the XJ oil fields. Further to the south, uh, you can see the location of the Topaz prospect. Now, this was Empyrean Energy, uh, sort of due to farming and spud a well on Seenock Block uh, in by June 2024. Now, th that was a requirement of the uh, the farming agreement. Uh, it didn't happen in time. Uh, they have uh, requested an extension on Block 2911. I haven't heard whether that's been granted yet. The Topaz prospect awaiting drilling. So moving uh, to the west of Hainan Island here in another tertiary uh, nearshore basin, it's the Baibu Gulf Basin. And you can see if we look at the geology here, similarly uh, to the Pearl River Mouth Basin, we get a series of sags and intra-basin highs. You can see some of them have oil fields associated with them. Others don't have any uh, discoveries recorded to date. If we look at the uh, the Wushi 17-2, uh, CNOC 80%, uh, started production in September 2024 in shallow water. Development plans for a new wellhead platform and terminal, 28 producers, four water injectors. Another success story, and CNOC been busy in 2024. Uh, the first green offshore field has come online, and that's the Wushi 23-5 oil field. It uh, commenced oil production in July 2024. In the Baibu Gulf again, it's shallow water, two weller platforms, and a renovated Wushi terminal. There we go. Development plan for 28 producers, 50 motor injectors, and uh, there's your peak production, 18,000 barrels in 2026. That was a story featured in Offshore Engineer. Again, staying in the South China Sea, this time on the eastern side, and uh, again, Sinuk. This is the uh, Kaiping South oil field. 
which uh, supposedly uh, an in-place volume of 102 million metric tons of oil equivalent. Deep water, over 500 metres. There's 100 uh, metres of pay, both oil and gas, and it's in the Zhuhai, Enping and Wenchang formations, all of which, of course, are in the tertiary. Nearly all the sediments here are tertiary. There's a, a map. We're not entirely sure where it is, but it's uh, probably somewhere in that region there. So in doing uh, our research, one of the team found uh, this article here from China Daily, and we duly made this uh, slide here. And uh, it tells uh, about another producer that's uh, that's coming online. When reading this, it said ultra deep water gas field, water depth greater than 1,500 meters. Now, alarm bells started ringing at this point. Why? Because if you look here on this uh, graph, you can see that uh, platforms that actually would go on down all the way to the uh, the, the sea floor, a jacket, these would be known as. You know, they can get down here to, well, sort of 500 metres. But certainly in 1,500 metres, all you can get there is um, things that float, basically um, FPSOs or or something like a, a spar or, um, or or a semi-submersible. These are all floating solutions. So something uh, something struck us as being a little bit wrong, wrong there. So further investigation and another article again. And uh, here's the uh, the deep sea one. This is the the other the alternate name given to this. And here we're seeing a floating uh, production uh, and, uh, and storage facility, which um, is more like it. Um, so sometimes we see this a lot that uh, the industry newspaper they don't have a picture for a, a new discovery or whatever. So they put a a random picture of a of a of an oil rig or a, an oil platform or whatever in, in there. And of course, it is kind of quite misleading. So uh, don't be fooled by the pictures on some of these articles. This is a floating facility and is probably more correct than the, the last picture. And if you want to read the details for this particular one, the deep sea number one, then uh, you can read it. Pause the video, read this here. Yet another discovery here down in the uh, South China Sea. You can see it located on this map here. It's just uh, south of Hainan Island. Um, this from uh, GeoExpro. And it's in the Guangdongnan Basin. Um, it's uh, Sinuk, yet again, uh, with an ultra shallow gas discovery. The water depth, 1,500 meters, but only uh, 210 meters of sediment to drill through before actually reaching this. Now, uh, it's in the Ledong, which uh, we think is uh, kind of a quaternary in age, um, and it's uh, 100 billion cubic feet of gas is the estimated size. And so in conclusion, well, China is booming. Uh, currently, three of the world's top 10 companies, energy companies, um, are Chinese, and that's by market capitalization. Major discoveries continue to be uh, made Huge field developments going ahead, lots of uh, new technology being used. The focus, obviously, is on uh, energy security. There is the, uh, the worry about the dependence of oil from the Middle East coming through uh, strategically vulnerable and narrow waterways like the Malacca Straits. So uh, China is looking at overland opportunities to try and solve that issue. Some pr emphasis on green projects, uh, so utilising onshore electrical power and trying to get that to offshore facilities. We seem to see very limited news from most companies um, other than uh, the domestic companies. Now, we think sometimes, yeah, well, we don't read Chinese, um, so that's not, a, that's not a great start. A lot may get lost in, uh, in translation. We see some quite garbled reports when they're translated into English. Um, clearly, CNO has been very, very active in 2024. Maybe others too, but limited press coverage, well, in English anyway. Now, we do know that 2025 will be a very, very busy year. Um, there's a lot of projects that are in the pipeline and a lot of plans for expansion of drilling activities. So watch this space. Watch Trove News. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe and ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.